ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار my dear brothers as we go through this blessed month of ramadan and the time is flying by we ought to reflect on the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa mal hayatu dunya illa la'ib wa lah what is the life of this world except for mere play amusement diversion as we pass our moments in this blessed month of ramadan we owe it to ourselves to reflect on this statement of allah jalla wa ala where he is calling his slaves to reflect on the reality of this life and then he says wala darul akhiratu khairul lil ladina yattaqun the life of the akhirah the home of the hereafter is the best for those who fear Allah and keep their duty to him and then he asks us to reflect afala ta'qilun will you then not reason will you then not reflect on the reality of this life ikhwani fillah our lord jalla wa ala he is asking his slaves my slave why are you preoccupying yourself with the life of this world and why are you forgetting the akhirah why are you forgetting the hereafter these things that we desire our lord subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that they are indeed beautified for us he tells us subhanahu wa ta'ala zuyyina lin nasi it's beautified for the people for men hubbu shahawat the love of the things that they desire min an nisa wal banin from wives from women and from sons from children wal qanatir al muqantarat min al dhahab wal fidda and he dub piles of gold and silver and then he says wal khayl al musawwamah wal an'am wal har and fine branded horses and cattle and tilled land allah is telling us my people these things they are beloved to you these are things that you desire women and children and heaped up sums of wealth and branded horses and cattle and land these are things that have been made beloved to us it's in our very nature but then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the very same ayah dhalika mata'ul hayatid dunya this is the enjoyment of this worldly life wallahu indahu husnul ma'ab but with allah there is the best return what is with allah is better than all of these things my brothers this month of the of, of ramadan is a month of reflection a month of rectification a month where every single one of us he looks at his situation and he asks himself am i being deceived by the life of this world ikhwani fillah that this is the reality of this life this is the reality of this world he says jalla wa ala the translation of the ayah he says know that the life of this world is mere play and amusement 
and adornment and boasting to one another and competition with regards to wealth and children. He says, our Lord, he says it's like the example of rain which comes down and then the plant, it grows, the vegetation, it grows and it pleases the person who owns it. And then it dries out after a while and it becomes yellow. And then it just becomes scattered dust. That's the reality of this world. It comes, we have our time, and then it fizzles out and it becomes absolutely nothing. And then Allah says, and in the Akhirah, there is a severe punishment and forgiveness from Allah and approval. And then Allah says, in this worldly life, what is it except the enjoyment of delusion? That's the reality of this world. It's like traveling through the desert and you see a mirage in front of you and you see trees and you see water and it looks beautiful. And then you strive to get to it. And then when you get there, you realize it's nothing. You realize it's just the light twinkling in the distance. That's the reality that we are chasing behind so blindly. That's the reality that we want so much. It's not real, my brothers. And in the very next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us, Sa'abiqu, rush, rush, rush towards forgiveness from your Lord and a garden whose width is like the width of the heavens and the earth and it's prepared for those who believed in Allah and his messenger. This is the reality. Our Lord is saying, leave off this, leave off this twinkling moment and go towards the garden in the Akhirah. My brothers, what is it that we're looking to achieve? We want a new car and we want a nice clothing and we want a nice house and we want jewelry and we want these things. In reality, we forget about the statement of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that when a person he is carried to his grave, he will be followed by three things. And two of those things they will return and one will remain with him. My brothers, this is our situation. When me and you are carried to our graves on the shoulders of our loved ones, our wife is going to be crying, our children, our mother, our father, if we have them, our relatives, our friends, they're going to be upset. They're going to carry us on their shoulders like every single man and woman who came before us was carried to their grave. They went, they tasted death. And so we're going to be followed by our wealth. We're going to be followed by our family and we're going to be followed by our good deeds. As for our wealth and our family, then it's going to return. My brothers, it's lonely. The grave is a lonely place. Nobody's going to get in there and stay with you. Nobody. The only thing that will accompany us in our graves are our deeds. That's the reality. And so, my brothers, why are we chasing this world blindly? We've made it our ultimate goal, or our ultimate objective, where we just follow our desires and that is all that we want my brothers look at our community look at our community here there's maybe somebody listening to this who he sees himself as a big business person and he has so much money maybe there's another person listening to this who sees himself as a gangster maybe there's another person listening to this who is amazed by what he has of wealth or what he has of children or what he has of friends and a group behind him. But the question that we have to ask ourselves is, where are those who were bigger than us, wealthier than us, more powerful than us, bigger gangsters, bigger criminals, more well-known and renowned in the community? Where are those people who came before? They took their time in this life they gathered from it what they could, and then they moved on. As every single one of us is going to do. My brothers, 
we all know these verses, but we should remind ourselves where Allah says until death comes to one of them, he says, my Lord, send me back. Give me a chance so that so that I can do goodness and do good deeds in what I've left behind. Allah says, no, no chance. There's a barrier behind you now. There's a barrier. There's no turning back. That moment of death which comes is the end for every single one of us. My brothers, if we are sinning and we are turning away and yet Allah Jalla wa ala is blessing us with good blessings and all of our things, this is a problem. Don't ever think that you're sinning and then Allah is giving you blessings, don't ever think Allah loves you. Don't ever think, mashallah, I'm doing something okay, I've got a good heart, I sin and I do X and Y and Z, but the blessings are piling up. Raqba ibn Amir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who is a great companion, he narrated and he's mentioned something which is, he didn't speak from himself, so it's as if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying it. He said it. The Messenger of Allah, this is from him. The companion says, If you see that Allah provides for a servant from the things that he likes, but he is sinning, he, he has sins, then it is only istidr, istidraj. It's Allah Jalla wa ala allowing him to increase in sin. And then Allah Jalla wa ala, he was quoted. Allah says, when they forgot about what they were reminded of, when they forgot about the religion, we opened every single door upon them. Meaning, the door of every blessing was opened for them. They turned away from Allah, Allah gave them blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing in this life. Until... In the midst of their enjoyment, the height of their enjoyment, Allah says, all of a sudden, we took them, we gripped them in punishment. The punishment of Allah came all of a sudden. They were enjoying all of the blessings of Allah, and yet they turned away from Allah. So in the height of their enjoyment, in the height of their heedlessness of Allah, the punishment of Allah gripped them and destroyed them. My brothers, that's what we have to worry about. If we're turning away from Allah and yet we have wealth, we have family, we have blessing upon blessing, then we have to fear that this is only Allah increasing the evidence against us. I blessed you with X and Y and Z and you turned away. So perhaps our Lord Jalla wa ala is waiting for that punishment to grip us. My brothers, this is the reality. And if we are going around in a state of heedlessness, then we have to remember the statement of Allah. If only you could see when those wrongdoers, they lower their heads in front of their laws. They're standing in front of Allah and now they've finally bowed their heads. What do they say? رَبَّنَا أَبَصَرْنَا وَسَمِعْنَا فَرْجِعْنَا Oh, our Lord, now, now we have seen and we have heard. So let us go back to the life of the world. Send us back and we're going to do good deeds. That's the reality, Ikhwani Fillah. That our Lord, Jalla wa ala, is telling us about that moment. So my brothers, what are we then doing? Where are we? The people will try to reason with Allah. Oh Allah, give me a chance. Now I realize. Oh Allah, please send me back. Oh Allah, just one more opportunity. My brothers, Ramadan is that opportunity. The fact that Allah has allowed us to witness this month. Our brothers in Turkey, just a few weeks ago, they were planning and they had intentions. We're going to witness Ramadan. And from amongst them, there was those who said, you know what? I'm a bad person, but I'm going to change in Ramadan. There were those who were looking forward and they were pious and they wanted to increase in their goodness. There were those who were not bothered. They were just going to carry on in their sin. 
and not one of them reached the blessed month of Ramadan. So when these people, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, are saying, Oh Allah, give us another chance. My brothers, this is that chance. Every night in the month of Ramadan, Allah Jalla wa Ala, He saves a group of people from the fire of Haram. Every night in Ramadan, there are the recitations of the Qur'an going on and the people have the opportunity to heal the diseased heart. My brothers, the hospital is the place for the body which is sick. The masjid is the place for the heart which is sick. If we are not coming to the masajid and treating our illnesses, our spiritual illnesses, the, the illnesses in our heart, then we have nobody to blame because the masajid are here within us, within our communities. So we have to take that opportunity. Ikhwani fillah, there is no benefit to regret on Yawm al No benefit. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, and this is a wake-up call for anybody who thinks, because I have wealth, because I have dunya, Allah loves me. That's not the case. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, if this world was equal in the sight of Allah to a mosquito's wing, then Allah would not even give the disbeliever a sip of water from it. It's more worthless in the sight of Allah than the wing of a mosquito. So the fact that you have money, the fact that you have the dunya, it is not an evidence that Allah loves you. It is not an evidence that Allah wants goodness for you. So then my brothers, we understand Allah gives the dunya to those who he hates and those who he loves. But Allah only gives Islam and guidance and tawfiq to those who he loves. And so we have to go towards that if we want to be from amongst the beloved slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To illustrate it further, Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu, he narrates that one day the messenger of Allah, he was walking through the marketplace and there was a lamb which had short ears. It was, it was dead and it had very short ears. In some narrations, the ears were cut. So it was dead and even if it was alive, it was defective. There was a problem with it. It wasn't a healthy animal. So the Prophet wasallam he took hold of the ear of this animal and he said concerning it, who would like to buy it for one dirham? Who from amongst you wants to buy this animal? It was just lying there. Nobody wanted it. Who wants it for a dirham? And they said, oh, Messenger of Allah, we don't like it for it is of no use to us. Then he said, do you wish to have it free of cost? No charge then. Have it free of cost. They then said, by Allah, even if it was alive, we wouldn't want it because there's a defect in it. Now it's dead on top of that. So it's even more worthless. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, by Allah, the world is more significant in the eye of Allah than this dead animal is in your eyes. So my brothers, then the question is, why are we paying with our akhirah to get a dunya which is worthless in the sight of Allah? Why are we, it's like that, a companion standing up and saying, oh messenger of Allah, I will give you all of my wealth for this dead animal. That's what we're doing with our actions, turning away, selling our akhirah, and then we're buying something that has no value in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ikhwani fillah. Such is the worthlessness of this dunya and such is the value of the ibadah of Allah that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the two rakahs before fajr, they are better than the world and everything in it. The two sunnah units of prayer before the fajr, is better than the world and everything in it. We claim to be people who want to follow the Salaf of this Ummah. We claim to be a people who want to follow the understanding of the companions. That's the understanding of the companions, my brothers. The understanding of the companions is this world is worthless. I will work within it. I will seek a risk within it. And some of them were very, very wealthy. If you were to take 
the wealth of Uthman ibn Affan and Abu Bakr and others from amongst them, they would be multi, multi, multi millionaires in today's day, the equivalent. They had wealth. They were outfitting armies. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he was buying up and freeing up the Muslim slaves left, right and center. They were wealthy people, yet the money never entered into their heart. The money was in their hands, it would come and it would go. But they were a people who the dunya was in their hands and the akhirah was in their heart. My brothers, this is our illness now. That in many cases, our akhirah is in our hands. We play with it. And the dunya is in our hearts. We don't want to let go of it. We don't want to let go of it. This month of Ramadan is the time for that change. This month of Ramadan is the time for us to listen to the Quran, to reflect on our sins, to ponder over our distance from Allah. How long have I been disobeying Allah? How long have I been disobedient, a disobedient slave to my master? And yet my master hasn't destroyed me. He's giving me an opportunity to change. My brothers, this is a call to every single sinner, and that's every single one of us. That we need to change and we need to improve. We need to fix our affairs because money will not bring us happiness. Wallahi. Money will not bring us happiness. Our children will not bring us happiness. Possessions will not bring us happiness. <coughs> the obedience of Allah and the worship of Allah, that's what's going to bring us true happiness. <laughs> إنه هو الغفور الرحيم <تصفيق> بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولا In one of his khutub, Uthman ibn Affan رضي الله تعالى عنه The great companion of the Messenger of Allah عليه الصلاة والسلام The one who was promised Jannah whilst he was still alive <تصفيق> The one who was married to one of the daughters of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. And then she passed away and then the Messenger of Allah married him to his other daughter. The one whom the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam said that even the angels are shy from Uthman ibn Affan. Uthman ibn Affan, the one who was a very wealthy man and he came and he outfitted the Muslim army. And the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam said it doesn't matter what Uthman does on this day, it won't affect him. Meaning he's attained the forgiveness of Allah. Uthman ibn Affan who was murdered radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he died as a martyr. In one of his Friday, in one of his khutub, in one of his sermons, he said, O oh, son of Adam, O oh, son of Adam, know that the angel of death who has been assigned to you has not ceased to pass by you and move to others. Meaning he goes beyond you and he takes those who are to your left and to your right. He has you in his sights. You're there. Your turn is going to come. He says that at the moment, he's walking past you to those who are before you in the queue. Those whose time has come before you. Know that the angel of death, who has been assigned to you, has not ceased to pass you and move on to others ever since you have been in this world. But... It's as if he's about to pass by someone else and come and target you. So be careful to be prepared for him and do not forget him for he does not forget you. And know, O son of Adam, that if you are heedless about yourself and you do not prepare, no one else will prepare for you. You must meet Allah, so take for yourself and don't leave it for someone else. He's saying to you, you don't prepare for that moment, you're on your own. You don't prepare for that moment, it doesn't matter. He is not going to miss. So don't forget about him because he has not forgotten about you. Al-Hasan al-Basri rahimahullah. He said, the life of this world is made up of three days. Yesterday has passed. With everything that was done within it, yesterday it has gone. Tomorrow, you might not reach it. But today is yours, so work within it. My brothers, this is the reality. Don't say tomorrow I'm going to change. Don't say tomorrow I'm going to start praying. 
tomorrow I'm going to stop smoking, tomorrow I'm going to stop the gambling or the pornography or the zina or whatever it may be. Don't leave it for tomorrow because you may never see tomorrow. Make that change today. Allah, the sins, they have serious effects. And they affect us, our hearts, our bodies, our souls, our minds. And they distance us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers, this khutbah is all about change. Every single one of us here, without a single exception, has things that we need to change. Every single one of us here, without a single exception, is falling short in something or multiple things. We all have things that we need to work on. My brothers, this is the month of reflection. This is the month when it said, Ya Badi al Khair Akbin. Oh, doer of good, come forward, increase. This is your time. And for many of us, Ya Badi al Shar Akbin. Oh, doer of evil, withhold, hold back. This is the month of change. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He guides us. We ask Allah Jalla wa ala that He fixes our affairs. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He forgives us for our sins. In this blessed month of Ramadan, we ask Allah that He forgives us for all of our sins. The minor sins and the major sins. The sins that we did in open and the sins that we did in secret. The sins that we did knowingly and the sins that we did unknowingly. The sins that we remember and the sins that we have forgotten. We ask Allah that there is nobody here who is in debt except that he clears his debt. There is nobody here who is worried and anxious except that he clears his worry and his grief. And we ask Allah that there is nobody here who is ill except that he cures him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that none of us leave here except that we have all of our sins forgiven and that he enters us into his jannah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Establish the prayer.